Western blotting, what is it, how does it work, and why is it useful? Western blotting is used to detect a specific protein in a sample by combining gel electrophoresis and antibody recognition. In a nutshell, the sample's proteins are first separated with the help of gel electrophoresis, then they are transferred out of the gel and onto a surface of a membrane. This membrane is then exposed to an antibody which has been selected for its quality to specifically bind to the target protein. In addition, a radioactive or chemical tag has also been added to the antibody for detection. In the past on this channel we have discussed both immunoassays and SDS page, and as you can see, Western blotting really combines these two techniques into one even greater technique. Let us take a closer look at how Western blotting is carried out. First, the sample is separated using SDS page, which separates the proteins according to their molecular weight. If you want to understand better how this technique works, I will link the video that focuses solely on SDS page by the end of this one. In a nutshell, due to the fact that the proteins contain a negative charge, and because of how the matrix has been constructed, once electricity is conducted through the gel, the proteins start moving from the negative towards the positive end of the gel. And, in addition, smaller proteins end up moving faster through the gel than larger ones. The end result looks like this, where the different bands correspond to different sized proteins. However, another protein of a similar size might just be occupying the same space as the one you are interested in, so even though you know the size of your particular protein, another protein of the same size might be there instead. This is where the second part of Western blotting comes in handy. To do this second part, the proteins first have to be transferred into a PVDF membrane so that you can detect your protein of interest. This transfer process is done by putting the SDS page and the PVDF membrane next to each other and surrounded by filter papers. All of this is placed into a transfer apparatus. This process is known as electroblotting and facilitates movement of the proteins from the SDS page into the PVDF membrane. This is because an electrical current gets passed through the system and since the proteins are negatively charged, they move away from the gel and towards the membrane. This is why it is important to place the gel on the side of the cathode, which is negative, and the membrane on the side of the anode, which is positive. Now we can move to the antibody recognition part of Western blotting. First, however, the proteins have to be blocked by using milk or BSA in order to prevent unspecific binding by the antibodies we will use to the membrane or to the other proteins. Then a primary antibody, which has been selected to only bind to the protein of interest, is added. Finally, a secondary antibody, which has been selected to only bind to the primary antibody, is added. In addition, this secondary antibody also has been conjugated to an enzyme, which, when exposed to a specific substrate, interacts with it, converts it to a different product, and this product can then be observed. By observing where this product has been formed, we know where binding has occurred as well. So why is Western blotting useful? Well, the Western blot is used for things like qualitative detection of single proteins and protein modification. It is also used in the confirmatory HIV test and in the diagnosis of some forms of Lyme disease. It has also been used as a technique to detect doping in athletes. If you want a more thorough understanding of either the SDS page step or how immunoassays work in general, please check out one of these two videos shown on the screen right now. That other one is the very first real YouTube video I ever made, so that could be fun. <laughs> or not. You decide. Until next time.